Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here, welcome back to the channel, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the state of PvP in ESO since the Deadlands DLC has dropped. We're going to be covering some class changes, some of the biggest losers, the biggest winners, and some builds you definitely need to watch out for. So let's get into it right now. Okay guys, so before we get into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge shout out to my patrons and also my YouTube community members. I couldn't be doing this without you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. It would help me out a lot. It really, really does help the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so there's going to be a lot to unpack in this video. I'm going to keep it very unscripted, very casual. Feel free to agree or disagree with me down in the comments. Please keep everything super positive. You know, there's constructive criticism, right? So... I played on the Deadlands, you know, DLC for about a week now, and I was in for a rude awakening, guys. I cannot tell you how hard people are hitting now compared to the Awakening Flames DLC. People are hitting substantially harder, and I don't even think it's because Proxets can crit. I just think that the viability of having all these hybrid sets is just phenomenal, okay? So, it's kind of like a dual-edged sword. Right now, everyone's hitting really hard. I don't know why, I don't know how, maybe I'm just terrible at theory crafting, but on my DK, even though I run Iron Blood, I'm still getting hit incredibly hard, but at the same time, I'm just intrinsically hitting people harder. So I'm not sure if the meta has shifted into more of a glass cannon meta to, for everyone to one-tap people, or that's just how these hybridization sets work, right? And it's such a beautiful game ESO is, guys. What other MMO do you have all this theory crafting? What other MMO has all these different sets and ways you can play your characters? There's not one out there. Like you compare this to like World of Warcraft, okay? There's like two different ways you can run your character, okay? And that's it. In ESO, the, the combinations are endless. The sets are endless. There's so much viability to each and every set. There really is. Granted, there are some sets that are, you know, marginally better than others, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. You have to have some sets in the game that are crappy, you know, so you want to farm the better sets, right? That's that's just how it is. Not every set can be great. Now, there has been a rise in Magicka DK, and of course, I mean, as you guys can tell, Magicka DK got a lot, a lot of love, and it's warranted, right? Mag DK has been getting crapped on for quite a while now. But I, I kind of fear that, that the buffs are too great. So the way Mag DK worked in the past, right, you don't really have a lot of bursts. You know, dots are okay. You know, you're, you're, you're just kind of like a potato, right? You, you, you just kind of just, just die slowly. But now the DK can be much, much more aggressive and your sustain is much better than was last patch because of the charge straight change the charge straight got a change to where it double its effectiveness and now that allows you to run a lot more damage on your builds in addition to all the changes the magic of dragonite kits such as ash cloud costing literally zero if you toss on an infused reduced cost enchantment which i have covered in my build video the changes to power lash where there's no cooldown on this anymore the the combustion passive changes the battle war passive changes so when you make all these changes at the same time guys you you power creep that class up so all although like some of these changes are very minor that they all add up so right now there's a huge influx of magic of dragonites and magic of dragonites hit hard i've went against some pretty good hybrids and i've almost lost 1v1 to an open world i'm not, not even gonna lie especially stam dk stam dk's are hitting really hard if you guys want to let me in on the builds please let me know how you guys are just blowing through my iron blood like a hot knife through butter i don't understand please teach me down in the comments <laughs> for the love of god Stand blades, stand blades are pretty crazy right now. Thanks to a set called Calorians. I'm sure you guys know what that is. You've been ganked by it several, several times. I'm sure each and every one of you has. Calorians can now crit. The beauty about Calorians is that all proc sets have a one second delay. Well, Calorians already had a one second delay to begin with. So you can align this with another proc set to hit simultaneously now. So Zoss tried their very best to nerf proc sets to make sure you can't line them up in such a way to burst. Well, Calorians is one of those sleeper sets to where you can if you come out stealth with a heavy attack in cap into a calorian it's over oh it's it, it's over unless you are actively waiting on it uh, you're pretty much dead um now there is a cap on crit is 125 percent this is mostly pertaining to pve content but 
um, it does pertain a little bit to PvP as well. So sets aren't critting super hard. So you guys need to understand that, like kind of in the past, like in, in Waking Flames DLC, that you could get away with running divines and a bunch of well-fitted. Now, guys, it's kind of scary to not run a lot of impen. I, I hate to say that. I hate to just run impen on everything, but impen is definitely the way to go this patch for traits and reinforce anything to bolster your resistances. You can do the well-fitted builds, uh, but if you get caught with your pants down, you're <laughs> you're you're gone. Okay. Another class I want to kind of talk about, the Magicka Warden. Uh, the Magicka Warden is kind of a sleeper class right now. It has so much potential. Um, I don't think the meta has really developed on how to properly utilize the the Mag Warden, but it is super scary. The, the, the dots hit incredibly hard, and thanks to the hybridizations, you can stop pushing a lot of health on your mag warden because the way it was in the past you, you have to push a super high health on your warden and you just have to rely on your your arctic ability to go in for the stun well now you don't really have to do that um, especially if you're rocking iron blood something of that nature to give you the innate tankiness you can just rock iron blood and you don't have to necessarily waste all of your points into health right so now you can push even more and more damage especially a lot of the dot builds like deadly strike right now is pretty crazy on dk is pretty crazy on necro um some classes that i feel kind of got shafted this patch is magic sorcerer magic sorcerer is pretty terrible um even on my mag dk i'm not pushing you know hella damage like some mag dks are running uh the kratos set uh, we'll, we'll get into monster sets in a minute. But Mag Sorks right now just seems super underwhelming. Uh, even uh, Stam Sorks, guys, I feel bad for you. Well, no, I don't really because Sorks have had too good for too long. I myself am a Sork main, so I can say this, guys, right? Uh, I have like 4,000 hours on my Sorcerer on Xbox. So um, Sork is kind of, I won't say trash here, but it's kind of got like B tier class right now. Um, Magplar is really good. Magplar is really, really scary. Um, the changes to a mechanical acuity are uh, pretty pretty balanced so now you can't come out of stealth with 100 percent crit chances is really good it does require a little bit of build up time for those classes but you can still use mechanical acuity uh, pretty well I'm trying to think of some other classes off the top of my head that have really given me a go but yes again stamina dk is pretty insane the, the stand blade is pretty insane the mag dk is obviously pretty insane and what this leads into is a counter meta so when these metas arise and people start you know abusing these OP set combos and more and more builds come out um, you can either fight fire with fire so you can roll the meta builds and the meta classes or you can do just the opposite you can expect what is meta you know you guys pretty much know what meta is because you watch videos you know from Godzilla from Outcast to Deltia you guys kind of get what the meta is you know even for myself so it's important for you to possibly counter the meta for example the Kratos set I, I forget the, the exact name off the top of my head I'll flash it up here on screen but it's a really good set because Magic and Dragon Knights are running rampant right now and it empowers your flame abilities by 5% but what it also does it lowers fire damage by 5% so just by wearing this one monster set right it's increasing your flame damage and also decreasing flame damage so that's a 10 percent swing when you're going against like other mag decays i would say probably about 25 to 30 percent of cereal right now is magic of dragonite or, or dk in general so you need to keep that in mind when you're expecting like how to deal with the meta right now a dot meta is kind of in play i know i've overused the word meta but i'll try to use different words but uh Normally, I would never invest my champion points into reducing dot damage, but right now I am, and it's paying off rather nicely, I might add. And another thing, so the question arises, is it a Magicka or Stamina meta? I don't really have an answer because I feel that ESO is as balanced as it's ever been. That's probably a very unpopular opinion, but it seems that Stamina has their niches, Magicka has their niches, but overall, I have not really encountered a scenario where I'm like, oh, that's completely broken. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's going to be tuned down. I really haven't. I really like what Zoss has done. 
know, making the procs that's crit, uh, whatever balancing they have done, I think it has worked out really well. Again, this is probably an unpopular opinion, so light me up in the comments. I would love to have a conversation with you guys if, if you agree or disagree whether this game is balanced or not. I mean, obviously, there's some unbalances, but overall, I think Sierra feels great. The servers are feeling really good. Maybe that's just the low population density of the servers right now but the gameplay feels pretty good the the queues seem to work the new armory system is absolutely amazing i love it if only they could introduce your mundus change as well you know it's like a quality of life thing because each time you change your build you also have to go in and change your mundus as well which is a uh, kind of annoying because not all of us have like all the mundus stones in our houses right those are pretty expensive but yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts on how the media ships out. Again, guys, in the towel section, let me know what you guys honestly think. Um, I'm actually enjoying this patch. I am going to be streaming a lot more often just because I am enjoying my time in PvP. And I will be kind of branching out into other classes as well. So if you guys want to be, be around for my Necro builds and this heavy attack DK build I have coming up, please just enable the bell icon just so you don't miss the uploading. You, you can see it before everyone else and start abusing it before everyone else. So that's been my thoughts on how, you know, the state of PvP and ESO right now. I mean, in closing, it it feels pretty balanced. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun. The, the hybrid sets have really revitalized my faith in ESO, to be honest. And there's just a lot of my ability and a lot more different builds that people can run now. And it just seems a lot more fun. So, again, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.